looking at the key features of trigonometry graphs or trig graphs, I would like to take a look at specifically the sin and the cosine graphs. Tangent's one that um, we do want to be aware of, but we won't focus in too much detail on that at this level. Reminding ourselves that sin always starts at equilibrium, goes back to it, cos will either start at a min or a max and go back to it, and that they oscillate, they go up and down. So we have some key things we need to be able to identify and solve for in problems when they ask you for it. So A is your amplitude, and that tells you literally the distance from your equilibrium or from the midline of the graph to the max or min, so from midline to peak. And trig graphs always are repetitive. They're going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. And so you look for that line down the middle that splits the equally in half. So my amplitude here in this graph is going to be from my midline to the peak or from my midline down. It's not the total distance across, but it is literally just from the midline up or from the midline down. And a good way to find that if you're uncertain, if you're not sure where the midline would be, is that you can scroll down here for the amplitude. You can do max minus min divided by 2, and that will get you your amplitude. So here, for instance, going from 1 to negative 1, 1 minus a negative 1, that's really 1 plus 1, so that's a total distance of 2 between them. You divide by 2, you get an amplitude of 1, which is what we can read off the graph. No big deal there. Um, so looking at what I call B, or the scrunch factor in the formula, this tells us how quickly the graph is going up and down or repeating itself over and over and over again. So it's related to the period which is going to be the time it takes to complete one of those cycles, to go from the equilibrium up, down, and back to the equilibrium again. And this just tells us whether the graph, the scrunch factor, is basically kind of telling us, do I have a nice slow motion graph, or do I have a really frantic, fast-paced graph? Uh, the equilibrium is again that midline, that part in the middle, and you can see that here in this equation, in this, sorry, this graph the midline there is going to be 0. So in this case, A is equal to 1, D is equal to 0, or the equilibrium is equal to 0. Scrunch factor, I'm not going to worry about solving that with you guys right now, because we'll get into more detail of that in the, the harder, harder questions when we're actually trying to find the equation for the graph. But an important one for us to figure out is actually the period. So really these are Two of the more important things to be able to talk about are the period and the amplitude of any graph. So I know here my amplitude is 1. The next thing I want to find is my period, the time it takes to complete one cycle. So that could be going, for example, from max to max, or min to min. So if you look here, one complete cycle could be from the max over to the max again. And assuming these scales are in time, that's the time it takes to get from the top down to the bottom and back to the top again. So that would be one period on this particular graph with time. So another spot to look for is equal the equilibrium. So here I'm going up through the equilibrium. If you're using the equilibrium, you've got to go up, down through it one time, and then back up to it. Because the difference here is that I'm going up on that one and I'm going down here, so I need to find another one that's identical where I'm going up. So again, looking at comparing those two points, my period is also, in this case, 2 pi, just like going from a half pi to 5 pi halves, total of 2 pi. So the period here would be equal to 2 pi. And that's the standard period for a trig graph, meaning this one has not been scrunched. So B here would be equal to 1. So if we take a look at another example here, the um, first thing I might want to find is my amplitude. And again, I can look at that as my max to my min. You want to be careful here on the scale. You'll notice that it's not going up in ones here. That's a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, all negatives going down. So that's a negative 0 0.5 all the way down to a negative 2.5. 
So the total span from top to bottom, from peak to min, is a total of 2. So my amplitude is max minus min, which is negative 0 0.5 minus 2.5. which is going to give me 2, and divide that by 2, I get an amplitude here of 1 as well. So my amplitude is 1, and to find the midline, one way to do that, to find your midline, is to do the max minus the amplitude. So here my max is negative 0 0.5, my amplitude is 1, so I'll subtract that away, and I get my midline is at negative 1.5. And if you take a look and dot in a line at negative 1.5, you can see that splits it evenly with a distance of 1 from the midline up to the peak and a distance of 1 from the midline down to the trough. Now the next thing on this one is going to be the period, which um, is going to be possibly a bit tricky. So let's take a look. I'm going from a peak, so I might look for another peak, but you notice that peak is not directly on the grid line. It's somewhere between 3 and 4. I can't answer exactly what it is. Same with that one, not exactly on it, not exactly on it. So we've got to look carefully to see where else that graph falls directly and really directly on top of a line. And you notice that it's halfway between roughly there, but I'm not certain. Keep going, but oops, we went through one right there that can work. So if you look carefully at that one, I'll erase off the other stuff, you'll see that that is exactly on the grid line. So, how many seconds does that take us to get there? Again, this is going up in halves. One is here, two, three, four, five, five and a half, five point five. So it takes me five point five seconds to get from that part to this part. And now the next question is going to be, how many cycles have I completed in that time? Because that's obviously more than one cycle. From here to here is one period and from there to there would be the next period, but I haven't gone all the way through. So I need to know, is this half a cycle? Quarter of a cycle? Third of a cycle? So if I think about breaking up a cycle, I can go from the max to the equilibrium, down to the min to the equilibrium, and back to the max again. Four parts, one, two, three, four. So I've got one whole thing, and then one, two, three more. So that's basically 5.5 seconds, that it takes me to complete one point one point seven five seconds. Sorry, cycles. So here, if you're wanting to find the period, you might have to break it up. I know that it's taking me a total time of five point five seconds to complete one to complete the number of cycles there, the number or parts of cycles, or periods. So the total time divided by the number of periods that are within that time, and here again I see a total of 1 and 3 quarters, so 1.75. And if I plug that into my calculator and divide it out, 5.5 divided by 1.75 conveniently gets us something very close to 3.14 and that might look sort of close to pi, just to be aware of that, but you could leave it as 3.14 seconds. So here, my cycle here is taking me about 3.14 seconds to get from top back to bottom, and if you look again that kind of makes sense. There would be 3 and a little bit more than 3 to get my cycle completed. So sometimes you need to be creative to find the period. You won't be able to read it straight off the graph. So again, find out the total time for a period of which that you can read, not a period, but for a chunk of which you can read exactly how long it's taken you, and exactly how many parts of a cycle or how many parts of a period it took to get there. Then you're dividing the total time by the number or the parts of the period inside of that. So again, here it was 5.5 divided by 1.75 and you get your period of 3.14, or roughly pi.